everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. I'm going to be using a stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and Gina K Designs. This is an exclusive stamp set called Amazing Flowers and it's really pretty. When you look at a stamp set like this, I think most of us have a tendency to automatically think of coloring it with Copic markers, watercolors, colored pencils, all those coloring mediums. And today I wanted to go a totally different route with the outline stamping and actually do a bit of ink blending to color the flowers in. So this is a really simple and easy technique. Even if you are not a colorer, I know you're gonna be able to do this and I think you're actually gonna have a lot of fun with it. I found the process very relaxing and I hope you do too. So let's look at the stamp set first. I have the stamp set on the right, which has gorgeous florals. And then on the left, I have the coordinating dies. I've also pulled out a ton of scraps from my scrap bin. I'm always trying to utilize these the best I can. And this is a great project for that because we're stamping onto colored cardstock as our base for the ink blending. So these colored cardstocks I've picked out because I thought these would look pretty for the flowers. I'm going to start by inking up those flowers with Simon Says Stamp embossing ink and then I'll emboss all of them with white embossing powder. Now I wanted to share a little trick with you. Our Simon Says Stamp Positively Everything tools are super great for a variety of techniques but what I really like to do with them is use them as a surface to heat emboss my images, especially smaller images like this, where you can easily burn your fingers because of course you're trying to hold the paper while you're embossing. I find that if I rest the paper on the Positively Everything tool, it doesn't really move and it prevents me from having to burn my fingers, which is really nice. I also encourage you that if you're doing this project to do everything in assembly line style. So do all of your stamping and embossing first, then we'll do all of the ink blending, then we'll do all the assembly. It makes everything go a lot faster. In addition to the colors, we also need of course to stamp some leaves and I've picked out all the leaves from the stamp set and then I'm stamping them onto teal and two different shades of green cardstock that I thought would look really pretty with the rest of these images. Again, keeping that Positively Everything tool underneath is super helpful. This is a heat safe surface, so you're not gonna have to worry about it melting and it's also gonna protect the surface underneath that you're working on. So once we have all of our stamping done, it's time to do a bit of die cutting. So I'm gonna pull out the coordinating dies and some easy C tape. I'm gonna use that to hold the dies in place as I run this through my die cut machine. Just like we did for the stamping, we're doing this in an assembly line style so that way we can keep the process moving and it's also gonna be a lot more efficient. After all of my pieces are die cut, I'm gonna pull out this new embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp called Exotic Vines. This is a very detailed 3D embossing folder. I'm going to emboss it onto blue cardstock, but before I emboss, I am gonna mist the paper with a bit of water so that way when I emboss this, it's going to give me a much more defined impression. This makes a huge difference. If you were to emboss this without using water and then also emboss it with water, you would see a huge difference and a lot more detail in the embossing. Check this out, it's absolutely gorgeous. So this is gonna be the background for all of our flowers. The flowers I am going to color with Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks and I'm using detail blending brushes to apply the ink. Look how simple this is. Because we started with a colored cardstock as our base, the ink blending that we're putting on top is gonna fade out as it goes towards the edges of our flowers. I'm focusing the darkest ink right in the center and then I'll just buff off any extra ink that might be on the embossed lines. And we're gonna do this for all the flowers that we've stamped and cut. I'm also going to do it for the leaves. So pick out different inks, even if you don't have the positively saturated inks, although I do recommend them because they're super beautiful for one and they also blend so easily. But no matter what inks you have, definitely pick out colors that go best with the colored card stocks that you have. After I've gone ahead and done the flowers, then I'll do the leaves. I chose ocean for my teal leaves and then I picked out a couple of greens for the two different shades of green that I have. Again, you wanna make sure you buff off any ink that's going to sit on top of the embossing. Because we embossed those outline images, that's resisting any ink that you apply on top. So now look how easy that was to color these images. 
It's now time to assemble them. I'm putting them onto my card panel here with foam tape. I wanted some dimension off of this background, but if you don't want to use foam tape and you want to keep it to a little bit more of a flatter card, just swap out the foam tape for some liquid adhesive. Once I have all of my images attached, I do want to trim this down so that way all of the flowers are even with the edges of the cardstock. I also want to make this slightly smaller than an A2 size panel. I originally had thought that this would be the entire card, but as usual, I changed my mind and I decided I wanted to mat this onto a white card base. So I'm just going to trim this to be four by five and a quarter, and that's going to give me a nice border then around my card base. I'm using a Tim Holtz tonic trimmer here. This is the large guillotine trimmer to trim this panel. It cuts through everything really easily. So here's our panel, and I love how that embossing adds so much depth and detail behind these flowers. It brings them to life. Because I did emboss on this panel, I wanted something that I knew was going to hold really well because there's a lot less surface area because of the embossing that's going to come into complete contact with our card base. So I chose some redline tape for this. You don't have to use redline tape. You could use any adhesive you prefer. I just wanted to go this route. So I attached that directly on to my card base and then I'm going to start stamping my sentiments. The sentiments I chose are from the Amazing Flowers stamp set. I stamped the word thankful onto soft navy. Oscar is going to pass through here and inspect all the stamping to make sure it's good to go. After I've stamped it, I'm going to use white embossing powder to put on top of the ink and then set that with my heat tool. I don't have coordinating dies for the sentiments. The die set doesn't come with those. So I'm just gonna use my fine tip scissors to fussy cut this out. And if you're somebody like me that has cats, you know that this crafting is a group activity. Oscar is trying to help off screen here. He's pushing some stuff into my screen as I'm working because he apparently thought I needed more blue cardstock. But I decided I wanted to stamp the rest of my sentiment with pink. So we're going pink for the secondary greeting that I'm gonna put underneath the word thankful. I'm going to stamp that with some of the same ink that I used for the ink blending on the flowers. That happens to be Sweets from Simon Says Stamp. And if you are interested in any of the ink colors that I used or the card stocks, check out the video description or the blog because I do have all the products linked there for you to reference. So be sure to check that out. I did stamp the sentiment twice to get a really nice dark impression. And then I'm gonna use my mini Tim Holtz trimmer to trim this down. I like using the mini trimmer best for smaller pieces like this. I find it just much more manageable than the larger guillotine trimmer, but that I use for bigger pieces like cutting down this card panel. So once I added my sentiments along the bottom of my card, I embellished things with a few fairy jewels from Memory Box. These are really pretty. They're a nice rainbow assortment. So what I did was I used my tweezers to help me pick up these little gems because they're very tiny and I'm going to carefully place them around my different elements. I did add a few dark blue ones in the background just to help tie that up, and I love how this card turned out. So much dimension on this card, but what was really cool is the fact that we were able to create this amazing look with the flowers just by stamping onto colored cardstock and ink blending over top. And look at the dimension we got. So easy, so little time really in the comparison to the amount of time that it would have taken you to color these flowers. So what I hope is that for those of you that aren't colorers or if you wanna take a break from some coloring, try this technique out. You don't have to use it with this stamp set, though I loved how it turned out. If you have other outline images like this, totally try this and see what you think. I think you'll have a lot of fun creating this effect and it's going to provide you a new look for your stamped images, especially those outline images. Well, friends, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope this was an inspiring project and that you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for additional inspiration, and I will see you all very soon with more to share. But until next time, I hope you all have a very wonderful day. Bye.